How do we do life, everything, without grumbling? Well, the first step is that we need to admit, you need to admit that you have a grumbling problem. And just by the way, just because you know someone who complains more than you doesn't mean you don't have a grumbling problem. We don't get to justify ourselves by comparison to our neighbor, okay? And if you're not sure, do what I did. Do a little grumbling assessment in your life this week, a grumbling self-assessment. Just write down what thoughts come to your mind, what words come out of your mouth when you're, when you're inconvenienced, when someone's rude, when someone cuts you off in traffic, when you don't get what you want. Just check your heart. Check your heart condition on this. And remember, Paul doesn't say, do most things without grumbling. Just don't grumble in front of people. Just don't grumble while you're in Christian community. He says, do everything without grumbling, grumbling, which means we all have a grumbling problem, we need to admit, and we need to have the guts to admit it. God, this is a problem for me. And then the second step is we need to ask God for help. We need to ask God for help. And not in the, God, I know this matters to you. I know you seem bothered by it, so I'll try to change kind of way. No, no, no. But in the, God, I get this is ruining my soul. It's toxic to community. I don't know how to change. Left to myself, I just keep complaining and complaining and complaining. I need your help. See, transformation always starts with surrender. It always starts with surrender. It's a good rule of life. If you're facing a battle, you can't change. It begins with surrender. And to be able to say, God, I am totally inadequate to stop complaining or grumbling in my life. It just keeps coming out of me is where we start. You have to, and, and by the way, God wants to help you with this. Jesus came and died to help you with this. But you have to surrender this part of your life to him. So we admit that we have a problem, we ask God for help, and then third, and perhaps most important, we must go and cultivate a life of gratitude. You see, you don't cease to be a complainer just by not complaining. You cease to be a complainer by cultivating gratitude in your everyday life. Apostle Paul put it this way, he wrote, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you. What's God want for me? God wants you to give thanks in all circumstances. And that word, that key word is the word all. Not just when your health is good, not just when your job feels fulfilling, not just when your relationships are flourishing or they satisfy you, but in all circumstances. Why? Well, a few reasons. First, because gratitude is not optional. If you look at Scripture, it's really, really clear. Giving thanks is not just a good thing. The Bible tells us it's a necessary thing. The Bible says, give thanks to the Lord. Be thankful. Make your requests to God with thanksgiving. These are not suggestions. These are commands. Gratitude is not optional. And because gratitude is good for you. It's good for you. See, most of us simply assume gratitude is basically for the benefit of the one hearing it. And so we think it's more polite, I should say thank you, it's just for their benefit. But here's the thing, God does not call us to give thanks because it's polite or he needs our positive feedback, okay? God knows that the benefits of gratitude are as much about the person who is expressing it as they are about the person who's receiving it. In fact, studies in the psychology of gratitude today have shown that people who practice gratitude, uh, statistically speaking, are happier, they're less depressed, they are less stressed, they are more satisfied with life regardless of their income or wealth or talent or success. But even more importantly, gratitude is good for you because practicing and cultivating gratitude in your life, as much as it might sound like kind of a Pollyanna-esque way to live, this is the only way to break that vicious cycle of entitlement and complaint. You see, when I'm grateful for something, my eyes begin to open up more to the gifts that God has given me. I feel less and less like God owes me and more and more like how cool is it that God is doing this in my life or is working in this situation or is providing for me here or is present in this struggle. And it creates a new cycle that works like this. The more grateful we are, the more of God's goodness we see, and the more of God's goodness you see, the more grateful you'll become. 